So good morning folks, uh, we are currently docked in the beautiful port of Rotterdam. We can see behind us is the Erasmus Bridge. Yeah, just trying to get it in there. <laughs> we got up this morning, went to the buffet quite early for breakfast. Um, secret here is go to the very back of the buffet um, because very little people go uh, down yeah, there. Yeah, there were so many queues at the front. Yeah, people were like starting to turn away whenever they were leaving, but there was plenty of space at the back and the same food is there. In fact, one of the little uh, guys that was working there was like, same food at the back, same price at the back, go to the back. <laughs> Um, so uh, after breakfast, Will decided he wanted to go to the water park. Yeah, I went up to the water park. Well, you went as well, and um, me and my friend Alan, we went down a couple of water slides, and yeah, it was really good fun. The water wasn't as hot as I think it was the last time, but it was still warm enough. <laughs> so we've just got back, French and up, and the plan is we're going out to explore. So come along with us. So we disembarked the ship at Rotterdam and we made our way to the water taxi stop. Um, in order to do this, you disembark the ship and you turn, make a right turn once you get off and you walk past Hotel New York and then turn, take a left and then you'll see the water taxi stop right in front of you. So there was a small queue at the water taxi stop and I think we waited for probably like 25 30 minutes mm -hmm. um, but it was well worth it um, it was three euros each and although it was described as a water taxi it was almost like a like a, a rib ride or like something a yeah a speedboat um, and it was actually really fun yeah it was really really fun and we'll insert some footage here now so you can have a look yes yeah, so we get off at the stop called Centrum and we then made uh, about a five or s between five and ten minute walk uh, to the market hall and um, the market hall for anyone who hasn't visited before is this beautiful big building um, which is filled full of different eateries um, there's everything you can think of from fish and chips to Asian cuisine uh, to Brazilian sort of street food to bubble tea uh, to bubble tea to <laughs> the American candy store Dunkin Donuts there's there's everything in the place um, and it's a food lover's haven and um, so for lunch we, we literally ate our think our way around it mm. um, I had some lovely uh, satay chicken uh, with some rice and veg and um, I just had the fruit Frites, you know, the cone of chips. Yeah, he had a chip cone with mayo, and you weren't that hungry for lunch. And um, then we, I had some gelato later on uh, after um, afterwards, which was amazing. Um, and it's a it's a strange building because we believe that there's apartments that go round the like the outside of the building, yeah. and you can sort of see windows from the inside that are looking into someone's apartment. Um, so I suppose if you lived there, it'd be quite handy because if you fancied something deep, you could be like looking out your window. Is there a queue at that stand, and whether to go down or not quickly? Um, but yeah, it was really worth a visit, and uh, we would definitely uh, go back there again. So afterwards, we decided that one thing that we didn't see the last time that we were in Rotterdam were the cube houses. So we made our way from the market hall uh, to the cube houses. It's only about like a hundred, hundred fifty meters to get there, but there is quite a lot of steps to get to the, the entrance to the example cube. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's a lot of steps within the actual cube house. Um, cube houses were interesting, but as a six foot five man, definitely not something that I would ever consider living in. No. And, and they're, they're expensive. No. Um, like they are expensive. There's a, there's like a, um, a post drop that explains, um, you know, about the people that live there and the price. Um, this was obviously just a show house uh, mm -hmm. that was put on um, but all the furniture is built into the house and we were sort of thinking like if we bought a new TV how would we get it up the stairs yeah like the, those first stairs were lit they were like that and there was like little short steps uh, yeah. it was like a ladder nearly yeah it definitely wasn't for me but really interesting just to look at and um, I mean, sort of just can't believe that people actually live there I know yeah Um. I think I would want like a pulley system out the window from bringing them in shopping mm -hmm. um, if, I, if I was to live somewhere like that. But yeah, it was really interesting as Will said, it was only three euro. Uh, so well worth, um, a, a, you know, well worth a visit. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat>
after going to the Kip houses then, uh, we had a look around the local area. Uh, we visited some shops, um, some souvenir shops as well. Some of those who were with wanted to buy um, souvenirs for family members back home. And someone actually did buy clog slippers <laughs> as well. So, um, yeah, when, when in the Netherlands, you know. And is there something I noticed that the architecture around that market hall and the cube houses and there's like that um, skyscraper and it looks like it's got a witch's hat on it and there was mm. that building with the yellow pipes and it's just really unusual and stuff that you wouldn't see in the UK or you really think that they wouldn't allow that to be built so it's just very unusual to see that and it's actually really nice to come here again and see it again. Yeah, so we made our way then back to the ship and we decided that again we would use the water taxi as we had so much fun uh, coming over this way. So we just made the quick dash back uh, to the stop. Um, it is just worthwhile knowing, like just keeping an eye if there's a lot of people there of where your position is in the queue because there, like we did experience a few people that just sort of think there's a taxi, we'll just jump in it, mm-hmm. um, regardless of everybody that was uh, queuing. And uh, of course, um, us British like to, to know how to queue. Yeah. <laughs> and just something about the water taxi is, uh, this is something, and it's, it sounds really obvious, like you get a taxi and you tell it where you want to go. That's exactly the same how the water taxi works. You don't have to get a certain one um, because you tell the driver where you want to go and if everybody else is going the same way, then they'll jump with you yeah. or they'll he'll take you where you want to go because obviously there's water taxis to the Euromast and things like that. Yeah, there's different so stops. So you different just stops. tell them the name of the stop that you so want you to go to. So you don't have to like worry about that if you're, you're thinking of using the water taxi, if you're going to come to Rotterdam. So it's just use it like a taxi. <laughs> yeah. What we would say is it's not that suitable for people with uh, walking issues. No, definitely not. If you have not. difficulty with your mobility, it's definitely not uh, for you because this sort of boat just does very much bob up and down. Um, and there's nobody there to help you on or off. It's held on yeah. by a rope yeah. and the thrust keeps it next to that's it. Yeah. There's nobody else there. <laughs> yeah. And it is very quick. You know, literally the drivers are like, right, everybody off, everybody on. Um, so uh, maybe not so uh, good an experience. And in terms of payment, issues. it's a simple tap on a card terminal within the actual water taxi. Yeah. So once we were back on board, uh, we decided that we wanted to go to Sean Philippe. Um, which is the onboard um, chocolatier and it has, um, we did, we had a coffee and you had a hot chocolate. Um, yeah. And we've done this before on Virtuosa, uh, but we like to do the chocolate tasting. So there, you pick basically five little uh, squares of chocolate, and then we also top that up with three macaroons, uh, because yeah. we knew from the last time that we enjoyed those. And it was just nice, sort of sitting there with our friends, having a cup of coffee, just chilling out, mm-hmm. um, and tasting all these beautiful chocolates. So after we had freshened up, uh, we made our way up to the buffet for dinner. We didn't really feel that hungry after eating our chocolate selection, macaroons and hot chocolates and coffees. And eating our way around the market hall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, we just went up uh, to the buffet for a small bite. Yeah, again, great selection in the buffet tonight. Um, mm. there was always th- We've always sort of found on, on this ship that there's always something that we would eat. So drinks tonight, uh, we decided to check out the Sky Lounge, um, which is over 18s, it's adults only. Um, one of our party is actually 19, and he did get ID'd when we were sitting there, mm-hmm. uh, which he was quite embarrassed about. But uh, yeah, I said to him, look, when you're 40 and you look 30, you're going to be grateful for this. Um, but yeah, um, in the Sky Bar, sorry, in the Sky Lounge, um, there is live entertainment. Um, it was super busy too. Um, it, you know, we we sort we stood at the bar. We got a couple of seats, and then strategically, then we got another seat and another seat. <laughs> then a table of two became available, and then we tried to get another table for two. But it, it was nearly like work, like yes. looking for the seats and making sure we got the seats. And yeah, we had other we had two friends that were coming a bit later, so we were like, we gotta have seats. And yeah, it, it was just really busy and stressful a wee bit. <laughs> and to be honest, like um, like the music and all was good in there. But sometimes we were sort of just sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, this place is rammed. Like, is there nobody like somewhere else in the ship? But that's the thing. Whenever um, like we'd spent a couple of hours there that uh, mm-hmm. uh, that evening, and basically, like afterwards, we come downstairs to the pool area, and uh, we thought now we the have... pool area from you can obviously see the pool area from the sky lounge, yeah. and it did look 
a lot less busy. There was never a queue. No, there was never a queue at the bar, but there were still lots of people sitting there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't as if there was like nobody there. Um, you know, there was still a good handful of people sitting there. It, it just sort of seems to be that there's like people everywhere. I know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and like. It is a bit, as well said, it is like work, you know, trying to get a drink and trying to get a table. And, and trying to keep your seat, because like, uh-huh. we have smokers that are traveling with us, and they're like, oh, we need a seat swap, because um, we're going out for a smoke, and while you're sitting there, minding their seat, someone else, literally, actually someone, more like five people will come over, can mm-hmm. I have the seat, can I have the seat? Yeah. In fact, and we get the- it, we do get it, but it's just, it's so busy that it nearly... It's just so busy. Yeah. I don't know. Like at one point, uh, one of the one of those we were travelling with had stood up to order a drink. Mm-hmm. She was sitting at the bar on a bar stool. She stood up to take her card out of her back pocket. <laughs> she was standing there, and some guy just came and lifted the stool, mm-hmm. and like took it away. And only then, the, our friend Christine was like, "Yo, excuse me, she's sitting on that, you know." Like, um, and then he had to bring it back. But it's kind of like you know, my goodness, would you steal our grave as quick? Um, mm-hmm. You know, so. Yeah, it was super busy and it, it does become like hard work. Mm. Um, but yeah, we went down to the pool area again um, after being in the sky lounge for a few hours. Uh, we had a drink downstairs and then we hit the buffet. And well, the buffet was also busy. I have never seen, like, honestly, it looked as if people thought that the ship was going to run out of food or people had never seen food before. Um, or the people that were there the first night told all their friends and then they all came on the second night. <laughs> yeah, and they like told the ship that was like docked in like somewhere else. Oh by yeah. the way, lads, there's there's great pizza here. It just sort of seemed like people thought that there was gonna be no food to eat ever. And mm-hmm. they were literally filling up for hibernation. Um like at the pizza place they were like oh only three slices each you know maximum and things like that and you know people were sort of getting a bit antsy about that and i'm just like my goodness is somebody going to start fighting over a bit but of there pizza? was a guy in front of you and he had about five of those rolls and like three slices of pizza and he was like waiting for more i know yeah uh, well, actually on the way back to our cabin we were in the lift and um i just turned around and said to him oh my goodness that was like like feeding time at the zoo Mm-hmm. and uh, another couple were in the lift were like oh um, never again they were like this is our first MSC cruise and our last mm-hmm. And although they did say P&O is what you should do but we haven't had a great experience with the buffet and P&O either no <laughs> but I think you know um, I think just really to sum up like our day and our evening here was that I think doing these short cruises mm. which are marketed as booze cruises and party cruises is what gets MSC probably a bit of a bad rep. Yeah, because for us, this doesn't feel like what we would describe a cruise to be to another person. And that's what we have said constantly Mm. to people we're traveling with. This isn't normal. This isn't normal. And I do think that, you know, MSC very clearly market this as a party cruise. In fact, I have seen numerous uh, travel agents on social media, party cruise, party cruise, you know, and and this and the date mm-hmm. of this cruise, that's fine. You know, it is a party cruise, and we like to have a good time. Don't get me wrong, but I do think this whole sort of short night thing really does, um, you know, give MSC a bit of a bad reputation because yeah. this is not what we think MSC is about. No, and um, you know, certainly because it have, is fun. Like it, it, it's a real fun cruise. You can yeah. feel that when you're yeah. when you're on but the, the ship. But the thing is, we we like MSC because mm-hmm. it's not formal. It is a lot of fun. Even a normal MSC cruise that we've been on before, it's always a lot of fun to be on. Um, but just without the chaos. Yeah. So after the buffet, uh, we decided to come back to your cabin to, uh, for the night and just had a look out the to the balcony and just the city is it's so beautiful yeah, it's at night lovely. and that's basically how we closed off our day so folks uh, we hope you enjoyed this video if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to click subscribe i uh, would really appreciate that and um, don't forget as well to hit the bell icon to be alerted the next time we post a new video thanks for watching bye bye